Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On the Paint Table. It's my weekly show where you see what I got done, what I'm working on, and what is coming up. So, 20 models painted this week, a bit better showing than last week, although not nearly the showing of the week before that. Um, <laughs> but back on track, uh, painting about three models a day. I've um, finished up my uh, stuff for Code 1, Infinity Code 1, uh, adding another faction, which is 012, so I could do the tutorial playthroughs of all the missions from the core rulebook. Um, finishing off my Yu Ching Army, my White Banner Army, to 25 points, and also painting the Darfo's um, HVT model that was in there too, and his, his pointy European shoes and very slick zoot suit. That's not quite a zoot suit, it doesn't have the shoulder pads, but you know. Um, I added a new hero to Warhammer Quest, the 95 classic, which is the Pit Fighter with his awesome top knot and red straps. That's really all he's wearing. <laughs> he looks a lot like um, Iron Bar from Mad Max 3 Beyond Thunderdome. If you've ever seen that, he's, without having like the little like kabuki mask on the top of his head or on his back banner, he's basically exactly Iron Bar. Um, and then I added some Institute and another Scavenger to my Fallout collection. I painted up some synths, some Gen 1s and Gen 2s, uh, and a Settler miniature to start a new series, an RPG series for Fallout, which I'm really enjoying. Um, and that's a lot of what's in the coming up pile as well. So let's take a look at what got done and what is coming up. So first things first, here's another 12 models for Infinity Code 1. I painted up a 25 point force, um, which will actually be available in the action pack coming up soon, minus one model, which is a Hippolyta over here. She's not um, gonna be in the action pack. She was a pre-order model that came out with Operation Wildfire, but she is in Code 1, so I painted her up. Um, the remaining models from the action pack are actually gonna be on the right over there. I'll show them to you momentarily, but you've got your Omega Trooper next to Hippolyta, um, a Beta Trooper who's kind of like a chappy with a, uh, he's a specialist with um, a multi-rifle, and then the Epsilon that kind of looks like Isaac Clark from Dead Space with a multi-sniper rifle. Uh, we've got Cuervo Gold something, Gold, I can't remember his full name, Goldstein, Goldberg, something like that, um, with his boarding shotgun and uh, a jump pack. He's basically an AD troop. We have a Epsilon, or not an Epsilon, a um, Kappa uh, with a pistol, and then the big Gamma with his Fearbach. He's like the super heavy dude, who's really cool, and the Gangbuster, and his like ride armor with a, uh, a riot shotgun. These are the, sort of like the UN almost of uh, Infinity, and I painted them almost entirely from Gray Seer Primer, uh, which is the uh, the contrast paint, Citadel contrast paint primer. And I found that it's it's a pretty good primer for metal. It's not the best because it's it's designed to go on the GW plastic, um, but it responds really well to Infinity miniatures. And then I used nothing but contrast paints for the base coats on these. Uh, Leviathan Blue and um, what is it? Uh, Black Templar, for the most part, for for pretty much the the weapons and the and the the armor plates, and that was it. And I think I just did uh, Wildwood for the, the holsters and the leather straps. And then I didn't, I like, I touched up the blue. I didn't touch up the black at all. I didn't touch up the weapon straps at all. It's just through a coat of uh, that Rust-Oleum dead flat uh, varnish over top of it. And now these guys are like indestructible. That's one thing I'm really happy about with that dead flat varnish is it's a really robust clear coat. Um, and while I've noticed that because the, um, the contrast primer is a bit thin, it doesn't uh, it doesn't like hold up really well on leading edges on metal miniatures. Uh, once that dead pot like like sprays on there, these guys are lacquered, man. There's nothing coming off of them, which is fantastic because no amount of handling has done any rubbing or, or made them have any wear. And there's this guy, the HVT. I can't remember what his actual like title is, but he's a very fancy lad with some white patent leather shoes <laughs> uh, with very pointy toes. And then these fellas, I had these lying in a box. So this is not actually the the expansion pack for. Um, for uh, Operation Caldstrom. This is just stuff I cobbled together. This is the Direfoes pack, so much like uh, with Gunner, I've got Adel here, who is the Darfo. They come with this fella to expand on it. But I added a Hacktow Hacker, because he's just awesome, and he's really good in uh, in this level of game in Code 1, and a uh, Tiger Soldier from uh, the Red Veil box. And this is, I think, actually a Tiger Soldier Hacker, but I just use him as a regular Tiger Soldier. It's not a big deal. And that takes all my forces to 25 points. This 8 model is actually 25 points, because the, uh, the O12 doesn't mess around, man. They're, they're, they're tough dudes. And there's the sweet, sweet pit fighter. Look at the muscularity. <laughs> His, like, sweet, like... I don't know what this is, strap clothing, red, red leather straps that he's dressed up in and his cool top knot. He's pretty awesome. You'll see him in an upcoming episode of Warhammer Quest. He joins the party uh, due to extenuating circumstances and goes on a, goes on a mission. And he's got some cool weapons. He's got a flail, makes him strength five, and then a punch dagger. Uh, it gives him plus two attacks, but he can't use uh, death blow then. So it's really good at like stabbing one dude, um, and this one's really good at, uh, at just like wailing on people. So when he gets higher strength, the, um, the bonus tax is really cool. 
And then over here, I got my synths, my institute. So this is actually the institute uh, support pack of six synths. You get uh, two Gen 1s with pistols, two Gen 1s with batons, and two Gen 2s with a baton and with a laser rifle. And then I painted up the last of my settlers, my scavenger here with his pipe pistol, and he'll be playing a key role. Um, all of these were from Black Primer, and then this, these two fellows were actually from the uh, same gray sear, and I used some contrast paints to do their armor, and then this guy was from Black Primer as well, with just a zenithal shot of gray sear just to lighten up the tones before I painted them. Um, I'll just base coat and wash with Agrax Earth Shade, and then finished off with a few highlights. I think that's Averland Sunset, and I highlighted it with uh, Old Vomit Brown. I'm pretty sure that color is. Uh, or it might be Everland Sunset with some beige in it. I can't actually remember because my brain turns off when I'm painting sometimes, which is why I struggle at making these videos. Uh, the bases, though, are chaired on granite, baby, and then dry brushed and given a wash. Uh, and yeah, you can see I used Skeleton Horde on the, the sort of like the, the suits on these guys where they're not all shot up. And it gave them a nice, nice dark wash. Here's some stuff coming up. I got uh, the last five points that I'm gonna add to my O12, which is just basically the rest of the unique models. So th two more Kappas from the Wildfire box and then the Delta uh, Hacker. And so that's gonna be my, my last unique. You can see here I've started with the Gracier Primer and I'll throw down some base coats as I go. Um, I probably won't paint these until I'm getting ready to play 30 point games against a live opponent which hopefully will be when I can get opponents back here in the in the studio. Uh, and then my Troll Slayer, he's the next hero to join the adventures. We're gonna get him painted up. This is the classic quest Troll Slayer. I just basically had a skin while I was waiting for something to dry, I think, on the Pit Fighter, and he's ready to rock and roll. And then a power armor suit for um, Fallout. I wanna paint in Brotherhood of Steel colors, because my other one's painted in like uh, US military colors, like pre-war, uh, sort of like OD, OD green. But the... Um, the Brother of Steel are gonna at some point make an appearance in my RPG and I wanna get this guy done and also use his suit maybe as an objective at some point. And then just to just to get the table themed out, because I do have a ton of post-apocalyptic terrain as you guys know, um, I got these little accessories. And the little details really do make a game like Fallout. And so getting some for Cor Vegas painted up, some some like stuff to replace my um, my like uh, or even just enhance my little like my markers for searchable items, like some of these great Voltec little crates, some Nuka Cola machines. Some piles of some some uh, some uh, was it some rad stuff with like a rad roach on it and stuff, a little Brahmin skull, some computers, some terminals and stuff, and then this like big computer stacks. It just makes the game a little have a little bit more detail to it. I think it's gonna be handy. And then uh, the rest of the institute stuff I'm gonna paint up. So I've got the covert office box with Kellogg and the two characters, the character courser, or sorry, another courser and the character courser. And then this is the main um, start set for the institute which has a scientist in it, which I really want to get painted. And then just more regular synths. Because the synths are great. They're kind of like zombies. They just sort of fall apart when you shoot them. They're a really good bad guy for my narrative. And um, yeah, it'd be fun to paint some more. So there you have it. Another week, another 20 models painted and on the books. Uh, lot of stuff to do next week. I got two more games of um, Fallout I want to record next week. And then I think I'm going to get started on... I've got, I took it all home, which is why it wasn't in the video today. All my um, stuff for Frostgrave. As well as some more indie titles I want to look at. i got a pile of indie titles in my inbox i got to actually start looking through and, and collecting models for. And also there's a new edition of Perilous Tales that just got put up. I think there's another another iteration of the beta. I got an email like a few days ago uh, from um, Plant Smasher Games saying that another edition had gone up. And so maybe it's time to have another adventure. So anyway, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next week to see what I got done and what I got painted. Until next time, I'm Ash. Happy working. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.